Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Thursday, March the 15th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. And please remember the past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having all that out of the way, let's get it on with some economic data. Starting with across the pond, we've got French final CPI consumer price index month over month came in at even unchanged which was slightly higher than the expected negative 0.1%. We also got Czech uh, or uh, uh, Swiss PPI producer price index month over month came in at 0.3%, expected to be 0.2%, so slightly higher than that. Uh, they left the LIBOR rate unchanged at uh, negative 0.75. And then um, here in the United States, we got Empire State Manufacturing coming in at 22.5%. Expected to be 14.9, so much better than expected there. But then on the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index, we came in at 22.3, expected to be 23.1. All in all, I'd say that's a pretty good uh, number for those two indexes. Those are pretty wild anyway. Uh, anyway, back to unemployment claims came in at 226,000, expected to be 227,000. Lower than expected, generally seen as a good sign for the U.S. economy. And then importer prices came in at 0.2%, or sorry, 0.4%, expected to be 0.3%. And they revised last month's number on the importer prices, uh, slightly down from 1% to 0.8%. So a bit of a pullback there. You know, that's not following in line with increasing prices across the board and inflation. Uh, it's not showing up there anyway. We got the NAHB, which is the National Association of Home Builders Housing Market Index, came in at 70. It was expected to be 72, and they revised last month's number down from 72 to 71. So both of those numbers kind of uh, missing. And then we've got natural gas storages coming in at 93 billion cubic, or a drawdown of 93 billion cubic feet, expected to be uh, 99 billion cubic feet. All right, and then that's about it. And then we also have the uh, long-term, uh, the, the tick long-term purchases uh, later on today, closer to the end of the day. All right, that's about it for the economic data. Let's get on to the overall markets. We've got crude oil moving slightly higher by about 38 cents. You know, not a whole lot to see here. We saw inventories really increase yesterday. Gasoline on, on the distilled products, kind of a drawdown, but we talked about that, how they manufacturers or the uh, the distillers, the um, plants are starting to shut down for maintenance uh, right now. So we're starting to see less conversion from crude oil into the uh, byproducts. All right, then on to gold futures coming off quite a bit today, basically down $8. We talked about how this, all area, this whole area was going to get kind of messy. It's really starting to find its groove right here. There's a lot of support and resistances going on in and around this area. And as you can see, it's just stuck in a range right now. It uh, looks like it is a downward trending range, but at the end of the day, it really, you know, one could say it's downward trending, but it just hasn't really gone a whole lot of anywhere. So I wouldn't say it's really has any discernible direction at this point, but gold futures are down and back below the Fibonacci, uh, 78 Fibonacci level and the value very high for the um, market profile. Bitcoin still continuing to struggle down another uh, few hundred points, just straddling above that 8,000 handle. We did break below that slightly uh, for a, a few moments earlier today, but as you can see, it has kind of settled down very close to uh, unchanged for all intents and purposes, but this chart does not look good uh, to me at all. I think it's going to come down here and test this 5880 uh, sometime relatively soon, within probably the next month, I would have to say. We got the VIX coming off a little bit. Still in the teens, though. We're still holding on to those teens, but it's down a, uh, a point and change 
right now, but we are, like I said, still in the teens. We'd like to see these elevated, at least for the remainder of the earnings season, right? So we can get some uh, good earnings trades going, uh, which we have a couple of good ones coming out today that I like to trade. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average up a couple of hundred points, 260 some odd points, came down and tested this trend line again today. Uh, you can see the most time that's been spent at any given place is right here at about 24, uh, 24,761 uh, 24, is what it's looking like on the nose, but somewhere right around in that to uh, 24, 2,500, let's call it. That's where the most time has been spent. There hasn't been a lot of volume traded. The volume traded down here where people found value, but we are building this node up quite dramatically. And as you can see, that uh, volume node, which is the indication of these numbers, is way out here on the line. So there's going to be a uh, long time spent uh, anywhere else to try and recapture that node there. Uh, but having said that, we did test away and started pushing higher. Not seeing a whole lot of volume coming into the market at these levels, though. NASDAQ is up about 34 points, tested the trend channel high here where we talked about that acting as support now that we're above that. We did break below that slightly for a brief moment, came down and touched the nine day moving average and that's when it decided to make its turn uh, and started pushing up and away with it being up 34 points on the day. We'll look at the daily chart here in a minute of the E-mini S&Ps and give you a little bit more uh, insight as to the market, what it's doing. This is the E-mini S&Ps up 10 points on the day. Uh, 50 day and the nine day moving very close lockstep with one another that is going to act as support along with this 23 Fibonacci level. Let's get on to the breakdown of the e mini S and P's. You can see overnight inventory started getting short uh, right after the opening session uh, yesterday. Overnight inventory pretty flat uh, after being long and today coming into the open markets. You can see we didn't really do a whole lot of testing to the downside uh, and started pushing up and away. Pretty quiet though, as you can see inside day. Our value area high, value area low is inside of yesterday's value area high, value area low, and that makes it more of an inside day, very quiet, um, a moving day, if you will, trying to decide what direction we're going to go. Um, it hasn't been really decided yet. I haven't added anything to my account, but these are the couple of trades that I'm looking for on earnings, and they are going to be some big margin hogs. For the most part, so um, I'm not going to try it. I'm going to try not to add anything today, other than Ulta. I'm going to probably play it to the upside. I think that you know they have gotten kicked to the downside when they have matched on earnings in several places. They usually beat or at least come in line. I haven't seen them really miss in quite some time. I think that Ulta is one of those brick and mortar stores that people like to go to. It's not something that is going to easily be transferable to Amazon because when you go into a beauty shop or where they have products like that, you'd like to try them on. You try the makeup, you try the um, perfume, you try the hair stuff and all of those things are very touchy-feely to the beauty industry. That's not something you can go online and look at Amazon and look at a picture of some makeup and decide whether or not that's going to look right on you and or perfume. Everybody's smell is different and you're not gonna go out and buy 50 different perfumes send them, or clones for the men's side and send them to your house, test those out and decide which ones to send back. That just doesn't happen. People would rather go to the stores for those type of um, excursions, I guess, if you will. So I think Ulta, especially with Macy's doing well, Best Buy, and a lot of these other brick and mortar stores doing well this Christmas holiday season, that's what's going to show up in the earnings for Ulta. I think it's going to do quite well. I was in there during uh, the holidays uh, trying to find some cologne for my 11-year-old who wanted to start trying cologne, and the store was doing very well. So I'm going to play Ulta to the upside for that reason. All right, and then Adobe. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with Adobe. I'm probably going to have to play this to the upside as well, um, even though it is at very uh, historical highs, if you will. I think that Adobe is still going to be doing well um, this season. I think a lot of people are uh, still using their products, and they are, they're a little into the crypto, I'm sure, but at the end of the day, uh, 
all computers are doing very well, and I think Adobe is going to be moving higher on that as well. But definitely playing Ulta. I'm going to have to touch and go, do a little bit more research on Adobe before I jump in feet first with that one. But those are the two earnings I'm going to seriously be looking at for today. All right, that's about it for the market commentary. Uh, let me know if there's anything you guys want me to cover on these uh, daily market commentaries. If there's a chart that you guys want to see daily, you know, I'm just looking at the ones that I usually look, but there might be something out there that I'm uh, not keeping track of for you. And I would love to run those uh, over for you. So reach out to us, trading at protraderstrategies.com and let me know uh, so we can start tailoring some of these market commentaries to meet your needs. All right. So you take that, take it easy.